Hey guys, um, so today we're going to be starting the series on modeling the LF1 to just build the basic uh, Rhino skills for modeling. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and maximize by double clicking here in the top um, top view. And I'm going to first of all just bring into the canvas the background bitmap panel. Uh, with this I will be able to place an image. Um, of the content that I will be tracing in order to build the building. Right? So let's go ahead and just look into our in our computer. And I believe I have here some images of this building that I just scanned. Um, I will provide these images if you need them to follow along. Uh, send me an email. Um, so the first thing is that click on the first corner left. And then we just drag and position the image, right? And the first thing we really need to do is just scale this image. At the same time, I'm going to just remove the grid by typing grid. And then here, clicking on show grid, yes, just changing it to no and basically remove the grid out of the way. It's just kind of being annoying. So I'll, I'll just escape to just get out of that tool. And I can now. Uh, go ahead and start uh, scaling this image. So the next step would be just changing the layer we'll be working in. And I'm going to do a straight line just to give a reference of scale. Um, so we can, we here we have a, a, the graphic scale of the building. And I'm going to do a straight line. If I hold shift, I will be in ortho automatically. Right? So you don't need to go down here and press ortho. Just Shift, uh, press shift, and you'll be in ortho. But at the same time, I want to just do 10 meters, right? So I'm doing 10 meters and pressing shift, and I'm going to left click to just put my second point, and I'm going to right click to finish the, the tool, right? So I have a line that is 10 meters, and I have the, um, the scale of the image here, what should be 10 meters. So this image is nothing, we cannot hold it, we cannot, we cannot pick it and move it. So what we're going to do is just use this tool to move the image from zero to our line. And notice that I have a snap and end on. I will just remove S track in case that gets in the way. And in that way I can move the image, right? Uh, again, I'm going to just move it somewhere else. We just repeat that operation. So what I'm doing is picking the image from wherever I want to move it from, like the base point, in this case here, zero. And I'm going to just move towards my line and click once again. So I can just put it here in the base of this line. Now I need to scale and I need to make these 10 meters match with these 10 meters of the, the actual units of line, right? So I'm going to just go and Scale. This is the scale for the image, and I'm going to click here as the base point. And I'm going to just navigate here by pressing Shift, and I'm going to click once, and then I can just click again. Basically, it's stretching this scale using this line as a reference, right? So in that way, I have an image wherever I want it, right? Um, I mean the scale that we really need it to actually start working with. Uh, the second point would be just we can basically delete this line. And what we're gonna do is just make this point become zero zero. So I'm gonna move it again. Click move. I'm gonna go here and put that uh, click in that point. And now type 0, 0, 0, and that would just move that point to 0, 0. And you can see that we had some inaccuracies because of, this was kind of scanned from a book. Um, it's still good to actually wear it because it's just a little bit here uh, on the corner that we can really figure out easily from the elevations some of that content. So this is quite okay. Um, so that's the way we, we position the image. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that operation. The perspective view. 
um, in order to have it in both views. Actually, that line we had was quite useful because uh, just to do it because it, it is a way of actually having the images matching. So in this case, I'm just going to draw it with shift. Oops. Right. So now I know that this image is sitting in that line. I've been trying to find a way of just making this image from this viewport appear in the perspective view, but I haven't found the option. So if you know that it's just make a comment out of that. That would be great. Um, but I'm just going to repeat the the operation just really quickly uh, in order to just get some also like do some exercise this technique. Right, so I position the image. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just move the image from this zero again to the line. And now I need to scale by clicking this button here from shift till the end of this line. Right? So basically, we did the same thing. We can see that the line and uh, the zero zero now it's sitting also where we want it. So both views are having the same lines, right? So I'm going to just uh, also go to grid options and show grid, turn it on or off. And a little bit of lag there. So let's go to grid options and turn off grid. Just again. Right, uh, because this image is quite heavy, we're starting to get a little bit of lag, but we should be fine. Right, we, it's quite easy to just turn off the image and on again by pressing this button here in case that we that the image is just kind of um, being too heavy or something like that. So we can do that very easily. So let's go ahead and just start drawing some of these curves. Um, so to create the building. So I'm going to call this layer crafting aids. Uh, and I'm going to do this layer uh, building lines. And I'm going to pick a color that is slightly more visible. Um, and some red. Something like that. Um, let's say a green maybe. Uh, cool. Um, right, so the first, the volume that I'm going to show in this video is just basically this volume, right? If you see some of the images of this building, and you can go ahead and uh, let's Google this thing. Uh, one. And you'll see that there's plenty of images of this building. Um, it's quite an interesting exercise for, for building the geometry because, uh, as you can see in the plans, it has a quite orthogonal kind of condition um, where these few kind of volumes uh, meet. And also, then you have this kind of uh, curve, and then you have this kind of very kind of interesting curve. So, in a way, in some of the facets force you to work with projections or or building a custom construction plane, so uh, these kind of skills that you, you want to have uh, in order to just develop your own models and not just stick to two or so uh, uh, walls and stuff. Like that. So, so let's quickly start doing some of these lines. I'm not going to do it so accurately; it's just showing the techniques in order for you guys to to actually do the building. Uh, so I'm going to just start following some of these lines here. And this is the volume that we're working with first. So here, right? So I'm going to start with this line. And I'm, I'm going to just stop that. I'm using this curve. And it's important that we use this curve because we want to create one continuous surface. If you do straight lines, the operations that connect, like screwing this uh, line or anything, you will get like 
facets, right? And I want to have a plane surface and that goes in that curve. You can still pan with the right click as you're putting points and we can always refine or redefine uh, this curve once uh, we finish. If we don't like, we can always add some control points to it. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of detail here. And now I can press Shift and I'm going to be doing like a straight line, right? In this case, uh, because I'm going to leave shift press even if it doesn't fit exactly with the, in the drawing, but I want to just keep this line straight. And I'm going to, I know that the, the volume ends here, right? I'm going to pass a little bit beyond that because I'm going to do some trimming afterwards. So I just going to make the line here and press right click. So I have this first line from the other. So let's go into the perspective view and we have that nice line. I'm going to type extrude curve and you see that I can produce a, uh, a surface out of that line. Right? And I'm going to type 10 meters, should be enough. Um, you should have this kind of nice surface, a continuous surface, right? So again, like what I'm doing is just checking uh, that this curve, don't delete this curve because you will be using it back again. You know, you, you, you don't want to be deleting the curves you're working with. You can always just uh, turn off the layer that you're working with. So let's, let's do the surface, for instance, again, in a new layer. Okay. Uh, surface, right? I'm going to do them in a black color just to know that. Uh, this surface is kind of the geometry we'll be dealing with and this line we have some contrast in with that right so I'm gonna use extrude curve this is the command that we're working with to actually extrude this curve and I'm gonna type 10 enter and I'm gonna create this surface I can pick it right click and change it layer so now I have this surface and I do have the, the lines that created it right that's cool. Now, basically, what we want to do is just go into the front view. And the technique I will be using here is just, um, just as an explanation. I'm going to just be, let's say, let's try the tool we'll be working with. We're going to be using something like a, a, a splitting of this curve, this shape. You can see that you can do any shape you want, right? It doesn't matter that it's a 2D shape. As you can see here, the 2D shape done in the front view. But you can use this for splitting purposes of this other surface, right? So for trimming, trimming and splitting here. Uh, you can do basically the same thing, or, or just one separating the two pieces of geometry and the other one just uh, cutting and removing this part of the geometry that you want to get rid of. So it's important for this tool to work is that you're, you're definitely defining, describing this line as crossing through. Like if you turn on control points, let's say, and you would have something like this, the program wouldn't be able to describe where like these are two different pieces, right? So you, you want to be able to just go through, leave a little bit of extra line so you can just really define uh, two uh, pieces of geometry out of this cut, right? So what we're going to do is just a trim uh, and it asks us what is the object, uh, select the cutting object, that would be the line. I'm going to right click, enter, and then select the object trim, uh, and then it's the surface, so in that way you can see that we use such curves to do that trimming, right? I'm going to undo that by pressing Ctrl Z. Um, so that's, that's kind of the operation I will be dealing with. Um, so I'm going to 
first delete first get out of that tool and delete this curve and what I'm going to do is just bring in the elevations of the join into this view so I'm going to just sit there and go to elevation and I'm going to drag it and put it into the canvas um, what I need to do here is just make some reference and basically match this image with the other image. The good thing about this image is that it has some marks of where these um, axes go. Right? So we can always go back to the top view. And I'm going to draw them because we're in drafting aids. Let's use this axis number minus 5 and let's draw a line. So it just represents that axis. Right? And another one in axis zero, or something like that. Right. So I have these two lines, and I can scale that image based on these lines now. But the point is that in the front view, you cannot see those lines, right? Those lines are just points here, and it's very difficult to track them. So what I'm going to do is just having these four views selected, I'm going to do, I'm going to go here into the perspective. And type in one of these lines and then go into my front view and then type quick, like just to do a line going up, right? So I'm doing kind of a two parallel lines going up that would be very useful for us to really kind of scale this image. And here we have the axis 0 and the axis minus 5, right? So we need to match those axes to this line because we know that those ones are the axes that we're using as reference. So the first thing to do is just move the image. I'm going to use minus five point, and I'm going to take it to my to my line. Right. It's important that you're not moving the geometry. You're just moving the um, the the image with these tools here. Don't touch the geometry because you will just compromise the accuracy or like or, or everything that we've done before. Um, so the first thing is just moving the base point like a axis minus 5 here yeah, and then we're going to just use this point as a base point for scaling and we're going to go back we're going to go on to the axis 0 and we're going to bring that bar down to our reference line uh, I think that didn't work for some reason so I'm going to just repeat it uh, I'm going to go to scale I'm going to put here uh, and I'm pressing shift to do ortho and I'm going to take it down back there so it's not so accurate because I'm not snapping to anything really so I can do it always a little bit again and, and be slightly more accurate right? so I'm going to just press this axis and I'm going to take this point to this point Okay, I see. I'm, I'm snapping. When I snap, it just snaps somewhere else, and so it doesn't really work. So I, I need to stop using the snapping, right? I'm going to do it without snapping. Let's try one more time. Uh, from here, with shift press, and with alt, we can cancel the snapping. So I'm uh, pressing both shift and alt to use, to position it, like eyeball it where I want to put it, right? So now I get it right, and it's minus 5. And zero, those are the two axes. And the last thing would be just matching this line here to the our zero plane. So I'm going to be moving the image, not the geometry, down. I'm also going to just do this with both shift and out. So you, I'm moving it down and I'm eyeballing it over. Because it's a raster image, it uses a reference, so it's not so important. Um, and it, it still has some deformation based on the scanner. Um, if you get the plans or something, you can have better information out of this building. That's better to really to work with it. But for now, I think it's, it proves the purpose uh, to just build this geometry. So I'm going to go into wireframe now. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the building lines, and I'm going to do a curve. Again, a curve 
would actually produce one continuous line as opposed to like mm, different segments. So that's important if we want to generate one curve with this geometry that, that would be the way to go. So what I'm going to do here is just click and start clicking on this section just following the outline of the larger volume. And This way. I'm going to go all the way to this corner here and I'm going to right click. So I did an, a line that goes all the way up to here, but here I stopped because I want to just do another line that would be a straight line. I kind of continue that kind of line because that was a curve, so if I, if I would go down, it would create something funny. So I'm going to just snap to that line and go straight down. Uh, like that, right? Um, what I could do at this point is just uh, again do some curve. Let's say I could use the near option and make two points on the curve, and then just stop snapping by pressing Alt and then following the curve. And then I could just snap here, and this line should be continuous. It's important that if you do such curve, notice that two of these points, the first one and the second one, are sitting on this straight line. In that way, the tangency of this curve would be continuous with this other, with this line. So you will actually get a nice result there. Uh, you can always go back to the control points and just maybe move some of this. You can also use an arc if you want. Maybe. But I'm, I'm more interested in these curves that are a little bit more expressive than just platonic uh, um, curves. So what we need to do now is trim this guy. So we're going to trim, use this as a cutting object, right click, and then we're going to delete this bit. So this guy, this line, and this line, we can join them together or press J, enter, and we check join both curves now. So we're joining those two and I'm going to join also these two. So I have now two lines of the outline of the building. Uh, with that I can just go ahead and let's say use trim, select the cutting object that is the line, right click and then get rid of the top part. So you can see that we have produced kind of the first surface that is the outline of the building. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just repeat that operation for the other side and start uh, building more of that volume. Right. So let's keep on moving. I want to move fast in order just you can always go back in the video and, and, and repeat some operation that you didn't get properly. So um, one thing that I've come across is some, sometimes there's some issues when you do lofting, uh, when you have two, two curves that have different number of control points. And that's the next step that we will be dealing with lofting, right? So I'm going to try to match the number of control points that my first curve had. Uh, just to be uh, as a, as a, as a um, safety measurement for for the kind of geometry I'll be producing, right? So I'm gonna just be like clicking on this other side, but just taking some consideration that there's control points on the other side. I turn them on by pressing control points so I can see where they what I lay them out. If if there's some differences in the geometry and you need more control points, you can go ahead. Um, and we'll see if, if that brings any problem, but I just want to be aware to create a clean geometry that the number of control points is similar. Uh, so you can see here that in this case, I need to put this control point before, uh, and that won't be a good position really. But I'm going to just keep on going and then I'm going to edit that situation there. So. I'm going ahead and just dropping some of those control points. Now pressing shift 
move straight. And I'm going to maintain that line there. Maybe there, something there. Then I'm going to finish it here. There we go. Uh, you can see that we already have something funny going on here. Just some variation. We snap somehow. Um, this is our previous curve, right? And because we snap to the surface, that kind of move, but we can always just move this point, like and enter to move it and put it back where it belongs. I'm going to use the S track. Yeah, that's sitting straight with the others. So hopefully you don't get that problem, but if you do, you can always just go and edit that. Um, that point. So I have this one. I mentioned that I wanted to refine some of these points that were not so accurate. Uh, I'm going to turn the control points in both. In this case, I'm going to just maybe refine this guy here. That looks better. I can turn off the image to see both curves. I'm dealing with this one and this one. Right? And I have roughly the same number of Control points here. I have some difference here based on the curvature. Maybe this guy could be a little bit stretched here. That looks good. So let's try and see if this could work. The first step, I'm just going to repeat what I did before. I'm going to just extrude the curve uh, 10 units up. I'm going to make this curve be part of the surface layer, right? And what I want to do here is just try to use the same curve I drew before, right? To trim this new surface, right? So let's go ahead and say trim, use this cutting line, enter. And then picking that surface, and uh, I think this works pretty well. We can go and check what are we getting out of that. That looks pretty good. Looks good. So the first thing we're gonna do here, uh, once we have this, we're gonna type loft and check if I can loft these two surfaces together, and you see that it's actually working quite well. The loft here, I'm just having normal and do not simplify. You don't want to just alter this geometry, right? Um, you can always just switch to the layer surface and do that operation. Again, if you don't know where loft is, I tap loft, but you can always call it from here, loft. Uh, so I'm picking, sorry, I'm picking the edge of the surface and the other edge. I'm saying okay, so I have this geometry. Right. That's good. I'm gonna right click to repeat the loft. And in this case I'm producing this one as well. And here I'm gonna be producing this guy as well. So that's the first part. Building one of the volumes. Uh, looks pretty clean. Uh, you can always get rid of the image and get rid of your drafting lines. Um, something we didn't see in this video, it's, and I'm probably going to show it in the next one because we will be working more with projections, is just how to project this line into it. Uh, into the surface so we can actually start using that line for offsetting and, and starting to do some detailing or just uh, trimming other stuff and just building some of the detail in, in geometry and that's, that's this first lesson I hope it helps out